Hi, welcome to Sefasto Young. It's Sunday, uh, my back hurts, and I am working on making sewing accoutrement for my uh, sewing room. I finally got a whole crap ton of this, uh, well not a whole crap ton, but I got like three yards of this awesome ghastly craft fabric. I'm totally holding it upside down. Oh my god. Boop, boop, boop. This stuff, <gasps> it's so pretty. I'm about to cut out, um, a ham and a sausage roll for ironing clothes and then I'm also gonna make a serger cover and a sewing machine cover out of it I'll try and quilt those so um and that's pretty much what the filming um like is all gonna be just me making these random things a lot of it's probably gonna be time-lapse whatnot Let's see oh I'm also going to I'm going to recover my crazy board back here this is my uh sort of memento board like, most of the stuff on there is related to other jobs and stuff. So maybe I'll show you guys up close pictures of that later. So that's going to get covered with some of the ghastly fabric. I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to use the ghastly notions or if I'm going to use the ghastly craft. The difference is the ghastly craft... Okay. This is the ghastly craft, which has, like, all the people on it. And then the ghastly notions is a, a simpler print that is just notions. So now since the board's going to get covered up, I feel like maybe this is the better print to use on that because it's like... I think the light changing outside the window keeps making the brightness of the filming change, so whatever. We'll just shift over here. Um, so for inside the ham and sausage, I'm using wood shaving filling stuff. Um, this is just animal bedding because it's cheap. It's really, really cheap in comparison to like other things you could fill it with. Um, because you're going to be steaming into it, you need something that is heat resistant and whatnot. So I started by cutting out all of the layers. I wanted to flatline the sausage and the ham, mainly as a protection against holes. I am using 100% wool, which is typical of a pressing aid, and I purchased these back quarters on eBay. If I'm cutting multiple layers, I generally will cut the inner layer first and then use that in place of the tissue pattern to cut the rest of the pieces. When you are working with such lovely fabric, it's important to pick the best visual placement to accent your new accessories. If you hadn't guessed yet, I'm in love with this fabric and I will be squeeing over it for the rest of the video. I'm sorry. I also found using my uh, small rotary cutter a lot easier to go around all of these curves when I was trying to trim this stuff out. Just made it nice and quick. Once all of the pieces were cut, I needed to make sure that it was layered in the proper order before sewing. The two fashion fabrics were placed right side together in the middle, and then a piece of the muslin flat lining layer on each side of that. And then I went around and securely pinned just to make sure that nothing shifted during sewing. Using a small stitch and my roller foot to help minimize any shift in the layers, I sewed around and left small openings for them to be turned and stuffed. Here we are turning them out. I had to make sure to take the time to clip and grade the seams a little bit and then also take the time to use uh, a turning um, tool to help smooth everything out. With the ham, I chose to kind of uh, pink some of the edges and then just clip the major big curves so that it didn't take up as much time. These were very thick layers to go through. Let the stuffing begin. So here I took a piece of paper and basically taped together a small cone, made a large opening in order for the stuffing to go through easier and then inserted it into the uh, sausage and filled it with some stuffing and began slowly slowly filling it with the <laughs> wood chips. <laughs> yeah, this is really the slowest part of this. So you can see I'm packing this really, really hard. I actually found this big dowel and I'm using that to kind of shove it in after I get some in there. So I want this to be very, very solidly packed and I'll do the same exact thing with the ham. In order to solidly seal these babies up, I used a large slip stitch first in one direction to catch all of the layers and close the opening. And then I reversed it and did a tiny slip stitch the entire length of the opening all the way back to secure it and ensure that the wood chips would stay inside. 
I am using a double thread here and also burying both my starting tails and finishing tails as best I can within the sausage to make sure that it doesn't come undone. This one is definitely taking a lot longer. I have this whole uh, set up so that I can slowly siphon in my wood chip stuff. Okay, so let's talk about finished products. So look, a sausage and a ham using the ghastly fabrics. I love the wools I picked. Oh, I know, they're such like fun colors. I don't know, I just love it. Um, so let's really quick talk about this pattern that I used. This is the simplicity pattern I used. Uh, 2720 Project Runway. Yeah. Okay, so here there's I have a couple of things about these that I don't like. One, at least compared to other sausages that I've owned, this one is very small um, and very long. I don't... I mean, the things that I've used them for are generally more like cuffs and stuff or things where you just like need to insert it a little bit. I don't know that I need all of this length and I wish it was fatter. So if I were going to make this again, um, I would actually probably add like at least an inch into this pattern, um, width wise at least, just to give it like, cause like I just wanted to have more of like, I mean, it's, it's like a small wrist. I don't know. I just wanted to have a little bit more, I guess, girth to it than this. And then on the other hand, this ham is huge. <laughs> like, I just feel like it's really, really big. Um, maybe, and it's maybe just the ones that I'm used to, you know, your little Dritz ones that you can buy. And again, I'm used to, like, the Dritz sausage that you can buy, sausage roll that you can buy. Um, but, you know, like, and I also, it's very square at this end. Which it didn't really look like that on the pattern, but I feel like if I was going to make this again, I would literally, like, shape it slightly less and maybe make it smaller. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the size doesn't bother me. I, I probably need the size. I still need to do some shrinkage on it. They were really hard to stuff. Um, I absolutely do not like the locations that they chose on the pattern to tell you to leave it open, um, which I should have known better. I mean, I should have done it the way I wanted to. So this one, I might open an end, pop this seam open, try to stuff everything down and fill this one a little bit more because this one I feel is really could use more. This one I did second and that took me a while to fill this. I mean, I think it took me almost three and a half hours just to stuff these. That's not including the, the small amount of hand sewing to close it. Like I was sitting there with my cone and my big old rod trying to like pack it all down as best as I could. Ooh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really, like they look beautiful. Um, yeah, I just feel like this corner, this corner right here just seems very, um, squared off and I would like it to be a little bit softer but that also might come with you know time I guess or whatever because I packed the crap out of it I still need to steam this one I steamed this one which got some of the wrinkles out um, this one I haven't run the steamer over but you know <sighs> it's so nice to have a ham and a sausage roll so um, yeah so I'm going to continue on with my project, and the next part of it I'm going to be using this other pattern. So yeah, there was ugh, several years ago I picked these up. I mean, like, several years ago. I don't even know if they still have them anymore. Um, the only thing I wanted out of here was the ham and the sausage roll, honestly. I don't really need bags or, well, I might eventually do this wall hanging thing, but this cover is way too small for my mannequin because pff, I'm not tiny. Um, and then... This one, I'm going to do uh, the machine covers. So they have a serger cover. This is a bag. There's not a picture of the machine cover, but there's a machine cover here uh, for the regular sewing machine and for the serger. So that's the other thing that I'm going to make out of these. Um, I don't know. And I have mixed feelings about this whole, like, under the sewing machine, like, bag. Um, 
I do use, ooh, I'll show you that. Ooh, I'm gonna make one out of this, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is what I use underneath my serger. Um, instead of, it's a, it's a, it catches your sergings, okay? And it has a piece of um, Rigeline inside of it to help it, and then it's got like some, put some rubber backing on it so that stuff doesn't, so it doesn't shift around. Um, and it's a nice, like, super deep bag. Um, here, let's go over to the shake. It gets set up basically like that. Oops, that's a little too far. So I think I'm gonna make another one of those out of this now to match. This was literally just made out of scraps that I had. Um, so I might make one of those to match. I also have, you can see here, I made this last year, this little pin cushion and uh, scrap bag out of Halloween fabric, but that was before I discovered the uh, ghastly fabric. So I might need to remake one of these to match as well. Right, so now I'm moving on to cutting out the uh, machine covers for the serger and my sewing machine. I have to make some alterations. I measured my machines and the serger cover I'm going to make slightly shorter. I put a little note on the bottom of my pattern piece. Um, and then the uh, sewing machine cover. So my machine cover needs to be a little bit wider because my machine is wider than this. It's, it needs to get, have about an inch extra here added to it. Uh, so I just like to make little notes in my patterns and then hope I remember them, especially when I'm doing this style. This one doesn't have any seam allowance on the bottom. The bottom gets bound. Um, very excited. I bought some different bias binding colors. So. Uh, sewing machine is going to be bound in one color and the serger is going to get bound in the other color. Um, for easy visual reference. Uh, but again, they, they match everything in this ghastly fabric that I'm going to use. So I picked out a lovely olive green and a magenta like, or, that will match the little bugs and other things on this fabric. Um, so, and then I'm also, in this particular case, I decided that I want to do, I think the sides are going to be made out of the ghastly notions, and then the, the top, the over part, is going to be made out of the uh, ghastly craft, so. And I'm also going to get a little crazy here, and I'm going to do something I don't do much, and that is quilt it, I think. At least a little bit. Um, I... The instructions on this have you put fleece on the inside of it. And I decided rather than fleece, I wanted something um, a little bit more longer lasting. So yeah, I'm gonna do quilt batting and muslin on the inside. Um, and then maybe I bought some fun variegated, um, variegated quilt thread for top stitching. And I'm not gonna get too crazy with patterns. Um, I did that once. Never again, probably. I should never say never again because it, there is always an again, like now. Because after I made my friend's baby quilt, I said, I'm not quilting ever again. And yet here I am thinking about doing it. So, um, yeah, we're gonna see how this goes. It should actually be pretty easy to quilt because it's small. So I might just do some fun little curly cues and stuff around it with my free motion quilting foot because that's fun. And then I can show you guys that. Here I go cutting the pattern out of the muslin. Um, again, I like to start with one layer. It's much easier to just trace the entire pattern out and then use those as the uh, templates for the rest of it. Uh, especially when you're doing something here, like as you can see, I added that one inch that I talked about. So that way I don't have to worry about remembering to do that every single time with my paper pattern. I can just use the muslin with the inch already added. Stopping my hyperlapse for a second too show you something that just annoys the crap out of me. This is my green line matters. Um, so this fabric was probably cut folded without like paying attention to the grain, which is usually how they do things at like Joann's. Um, however, you will notice that this one yard of fabric 
and this 36 inch piece um, have, have an issue, right? There to there versus here to here because it's not a cut on the green and so it's going cattywampus. Um, yeah, luckily I did buy another two yards of this stuff because I'm obsessed with it. So I can use this piece for something else. I just thought I would take a second to kind of explain. This is, you know, like if you're cutting something that's exactly, like if you think you need an exactly a yard of fabric, particularly if you were going to a Joann's, do not assume that you will get, always buy extra, just buy extra. It's, it's, it's better. Just buy extra. All right, so now I've pulled out my much larger two yard piece and I'm cutting out the layers. You'll notice that I cut kind of weird here because I really wanted to make sure that the pattern was centered a particular way in this case. And then these, it wasn't as important. So I kind of just did my normal spare, sparing use of fabric. Okay, and then I took the time to cut out the uh, quilt batting. This is just 100% natural cotton quilt batting. Um, and then I had to take the time to sandwich each layer, kind of press it, make sure it uh, was properly stretched and centered, make the panels align on both sides. And then I took uh, safety pins and pinned in a um, kind of three by two by three like pattern, like across so that it all stayed in place. And that's a good way to pin when you're trying to sew multiple layers together for quilting. Or at least that's what I was told when I tried to do a quilt once. All right, so I have my sewing machine set up. I've got this awesome um, variegated multicolored thread. It's kind of got pink, blue, green, yellow, a little bit of orange, okay? Um, on my sewing machine, I have it set up with, this is my uh, free motion quilting foot, okay? So basically what happens here, I'm gonna, oops, sorry, my fingers are in the frame is uh, as you quilt, let me see if I can do this one-handed. If it gets screwed up, oh well. That's what counts is. See how it moves up and down? That is controlled by uh, the fact that this little lever gets pushed up and down by this as the needle moves. So that's kind of how that works. Um, I keep getting my fingers in the frame. Sorry. That's what happens when I hold the, the phone. Um, so I am going really slowly. I am just doing a bunch of curly cues. Um, actually you can't go too slow. You have to like have your foot down full speed and then move the fabric slowly to get the design you want because my feed dogs are dropped. And so basically the only thing that is guiding my fabric is going to be my hands, um, holding onto both sides of it and kind of moving it along. So, um, I've got a quilting needle in there going on. I think it's a 90, 14. It's probably too big. Probably should have had a small one, but I didn't have one on hand other than that. Um, and I don't do this often, so it's fun and frustrating. Um, like you can see the stitches kind of vary in length depending. I'll show more close-ups of this afterwards. It's kind of hard to see it while it's in the in the machine right here. But so yeah, I'm just going to kind of do like a little swirly cue thing all over the sides and then we'll see how tired I get of that and if I do that on other pieces as well. So I'll set this up on a hyperlapse now and uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else out of time. And we're good to go. And off we go. To reiterate, the feed dogs are down and the needle makes the foot pounce up and down, allowing you to guide the fabric however you want it to. I work in small sections. It can be hard to move your hands on the fabric and I needed to stop to remove my safety pins as I went. In order to get a smooth flow, you have to run the foot at a steady higher pace and kind of move flowingly with the fabric. Uh, it's tricky to learn. And but I've really seen some people do amazing work with it and even follow complex patterns and drawings on it. I am definitely not at that skill level, but it is really fun and I do really love the finished look of it. Okay, so here is one side of the uh, sewing machine cover done with the sort of 
very random uh, free motion quilting stitching that I did with my machine. This takes a really, really long time. This is why I don't do this sort of stuff normally. Um, and I think because of that, I have decided that I am possibly only going to do the sides of the machines and not the full center panels of both of them. We'll see. See if that is how I feel. I might put some straight stitching across that. That does have a more, um, like, like, this is a very busy pattern. The front panels are that, like, less busy kind of scene panel, um, or scene what do you want? I don't know. Vignette? I don't know. Yeah. They're like vignettes or something. Um, so I might not do all of this like crazy quilting stitching on them. Um, but yeah, I really am literally just making this up. Uh, and I mean, like you can see there's places where I have like lovely flowing swirls and then some not so lovely flowing swirls. Um, and who knows, maybe I'm even doing it wrong. I just literally make shit up sometimes, you know, fake till you make it, make it up as long as it's pretty in the end. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things that I have very specific ways that I do, but this is definitely one that is me pulling it out of my butt. I have uh, free motion quilted the sides of my, these are the right here and here are the two sides for the, uh, machine cover here and here are the two sides for the serger cover. Um, I'm really trying to decide what I want to do because I don't want to do that on all of this for several reasons. Um, I'm considering... I'm not, I don't think I'm going to quilt this section at all. I think I'm just going to leave the sides because it'll give a nice stiffness and then I'm just going to... Um, stitch this together down the sides and insert it because I don't want to uh, busy up this pattern any more than it already is. And I think the batting, I might throw, I might go in and like um, throw in uh, like on this, there's like the point here and here where it goes across. I might throw like a, just a straight stitch across and the same with this, like basically, you know, here, here, and like somewhere in the front, I might throw a straight stitch across the big panel just to give it like a turning point structurally or something. But then again, maybe not. We'll, we'll see. I'm gonna fiddle with it. I'm also trying to decide if I think I'm gonna do pink for the sewing machine cover and green for the serger cover. So the way that these go together, wrong sides together, so this is all of the inside. I've matched. This is the uh, serger cover, so it's, I'll show you. This gets matched up here. So I've clipped the long piece at the uh, marks where it lines up so that it can, uh, you know, go around these corners because this is the one that has like the sharp edges, not the curved edges. Do, do, do. So this clip goes here. Really, I'm just following the lovely instructions. Look at the corner, it gets a little complicated. You're gonna have to square it off. That's not too hard, really. You're just gonna have to remember to manipulate that in and out of the way. I'm actually gonna make sure that I sew. Um, this is gonna be the downside, and this is I'm gonna sew up with because it will be easier to deal with these uh, corners. And I'm also going to uh, do my bias tape at the exact same time because I'm. That's just the way I roll. Um, so that means I'm going to have to like stop. I've been, I already did the other side. Spoiler. Um, although I haven't finished it yet. 
but at this point I'm going to stitch, I'm going to stitch to here, stop, clip my threads, manipulate my bias binding so that I can uh, fold it the way I need to so that I can continue running the other direction. Um, and I will do that at two points at this uh, back corner and then at this front top corner. I will stitch to my um, pin that's here, stop, manipulate my bias tape, go back in and stitch down the other line because it's just easier. So I will um, I'll film that and you'll see. Yeah, so it just it pinned together nicely. All of my li edges lined up. Um, I think I got all of my both of, all of my layers have been caught in all of them. So and I'm using I'm using um, what the half inch wide bias. I really wish I'd gotten the five eighths. Pattern said half inch. I'm actually sewing this on at three eighths because I'm a little bit worried about how with how thick it is, the turnover, um, and having enough to actually get over enough and be able to do the stitch in the ditch on the other side, so, which is how I'm going to end up finishing it. So here I've already um, sewed it on this side. You can see. Uh, I've manipulated my corners so when I go here I will be able to fold this down and fold this and I'm gonna um, stitch in the ditch from this side to catch all of this in the back so um, but like I said because of the thickness I just feel like if I had actually stitched to this at half an inch that extra eighth over then I would have a hard time getting this wrapped around and I would have ended up trimming my seams so that I could and it just seemed easier to go straight to stitching at three eighths. And this, since it's not a garment uh, and it's just covering sewing machines, it doesn't need to be that precise, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Uh, if you don't know, when you're working with bias tape, there is usually one side, when you get it out of the, the package, there's usually one side that's shorter than the other. So this is the side that I'm gonna sew on so that when it folds over, um, uh, the longer side will be on the back, and then that's better for the stitch in the ditch situation. So yeah, so this is, I'm putting the shorter of the two sides, opening it up. I'm going to use, this is 3 eighths, so I am literally going to use that ditch as my um, stitching guide. Okay, so a little helpful tip for Stitch of the Ditch is to change out your foot. You can either uh, change it out to one like this, or you can change it out to a zipper foot. It allows you to get a little bit more precise and see where you're stitching better, and that really lets you like stitch right in the ditch. This one is really nice because you can um, like adjust it so that it rides right in the ditch and the needle follows right behind it because it's got this uh, like little... little extension that would sit right into the ditch and whatnot. So you can keep it nice and even that way. Once my foot is adjusted, I let my sewing machine do the work. There are a few moments you will see here where I reach through to the back to hold tension on the piece and help guide it through. Um, usually if it's thick and I'm having trouble going through the machine, but I'm not pulling at all. I'm still letting the feed dogs do the work. I'm just kind of creating tension to help it. It's a good skill to learn if you are working with bulky items and it can really solve some troubles for you. And, oh, see, this is why I like to pin, because 
Sometimes even when I pin, I still will miss a spot. That's just really annoying. That was like right at the line. Ah. But, you know, overall, we can go back. We can fix that. That one's not hard. It's all nice and in the ditch on the front. Just barely. There's one spot right here. You can just barely see it. And one spot right here. That, that's why you match your thread because it just sometimes doesn't happen perfect. Don't stress over these things. No one's perfect. I've finished them. Yay! <sighs> so, sewing machine cover. And the serger cover. Ham. Sausage roll. Front of the serger cover. This unfortunately really does mean that I need to redo these. And that, yeah. Maybe redo my pin pillow too. This is my pin pillow. I use this for um, safety pins. It's really great for like quick fitting. Um, you can load it with a bunch of open safety pins and then, you know, pull them out as you need to um, and fit someone. So that was a trick that I picked up from my old sewing, uh, my old uh, theater, my old theater. And I still use it today. So, yeah. <sighs> It's so awesome. I'm like so obsessed with this fabric. I mean, I literally like, like I said, I need to, I need to remake those. I am going to cover my, I might recover my ironing board. I might, I'm definitely recovering my bulletin board next. Um, and then I need to think about other exciting things I need to make. Okay. So I totally didn't feel myself cutting this stuff out. Um, next thing I'm making is like I said, replacement for this. Um, so I'm making a smaller version. This is was a 6x6 six six square that I did um, 3 8 seam allowance and left a corner open. I like the corner fill the best, although I did stitch in just a little bit so it's not completely to the corner. Just basically enough to insert a funnel. I am working on filling that with Desert Blend English Walnut Shells. Um, the walnut shells help, okay, so there's oils on the walnut shell, which help uh, lubricate your pins, and then it also helps, like it's supposed to help, um, from what I've read, it's supposed to help uh, sharpen and clean them. So if you have sticky pins, uh, because like I do a lot of weird crafty stuff with my pins too, it'll clean off the stickiness. Um, it also makes a really nice weight, because that's, that's, this one is like, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if you can tell how heavy it is. It's got some weight to it. It holds this up. It can hold, like, I don't even know if that was in frame. Yeah. <laughs> Let's remember to check our framing. So, yeah. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm filling this with the English walnut. I've got this little uh, loopy that I tied onto it that I'm going to make a... So, this was 6x6. Six six. This is a little 8 in. This is a little 8-inch piece of... Um, uh, the bias that I folded over and zigged down the center and then here I have two 11 by 17 pieces of fabric that I have hemmed or seamed not hemmed seamed one side and then the bottom I'm gonna open this uh, do corner miters to make it open and flat like this one you know um, which I will film and then I take a piece of Rigeline and um, make a loop stitch it to the top and turn it in a couple of times this one I chose to put some rickrack on I don't know if I'm going to embellish this one or not um, attach a little button and the button can uh, allow you to take it off if you need to basically from the bias tape So, I'm actually considering making these and selling these. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> Would people be interested in that instead of making them themselves? <laughs> so yeah, stick the funnel in. And, uh, to this side. Okay. 
it also makes a huge mess, so much like the uh, wood shavings from the thing. So I figured out a couple of ways. But... And it takes quite a bit because you got to fill all of this. So that's the other thing, and that's what I learned after making that other big one down there, is that um, smaller is sometimes better. So one of the big things that I always have a problem with, and I mean I literally just did this wrong. So one of the things when I am trying to bag something out and I don't want to press the seam open flat, I want to push it to one side, but I want the um, other piece to mirror that and be pushed to the other direction. So basically when um, when they're next to each other, like the, the seam allowance will go opposite directions. Um, I almost, <laughs> almost always have a problem remembering how to do that. The trick is to actually just press everything in the exact same direction on the wrong side. So you see I've got this one going this way and the seam is also going this way. Going this way, going this way. Because when you turn one right side out, then your seams will actually be going opposite directions. And I always screw that up. I always try to press them the opposite directions when they're on the wrong side. Um, and then it never works. And then I have to go back and repress them. Luckily, these weren't very hard. So yeah, basically I just pressed open the seam. This also really makes sure that it's nice and flat and open on the inside. Um, and then I pressed the bottom. So yeah, like I said, this is now on these, I'm going to go on this little bottom diamond on this bottom diamond. We're going to go about two inches, two ish inches up. I'm going to just try and get that straight. I should do it on this side. Maybe, I don't know. Whatever side you're going to end up sewing on. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. So that will actually make a box. So when you sew that, you're not sewing here. You're just sewing here and here. Yeah, this is, this is not a sewing. This is just for demonstration. Okay, so here is, I have stitched pressed it in here um, so you can kind of see it while well, I put a big crease in it and you don't that will get pressed out you can see now how it uh, creates a cone not a cone a cylinder a cylinder silly me yeah it makes a nice open so this one I'm gonna flip right sides out And I went ahead and pressed that stuff beforehand just to help it be in place. And then I'm going to line up my seams. Like I said, they will be opposite each other because I pressed them the same way. that there and I have a nice lined bag. Again, the zoom on this. It's a nice lined bag. Next up on this is going to be taking a piece of Ridgeline that is 17 inches plus a little bit for overlap. Sewing that closed into a circle and then doing a little uh, zig it to this and then I kind of just fold fold and it stays in place. All right. Here is, I want you to focus on that. All right, here is the bag with a piece of Ridgeline zigzagged to it. This is on my sewing machine. My sewing machine is not fancy, it is a home domestic. Just get yourself a large needle and it will be perfectly fine, I promise. Get yourself a, a 16100 or an 18110. <laughs> You can use a G needle if you really feel like you need to. I suppose you could use a leather needle, but I don't think it would make a difference. Um, Ridgeline is meant to be sewn through. Uh, yeah, 
and you can go ahead and zigzag it. So this doesn't look very pretty right now, but the cool part about the Ridgeline and the fact that I've purposely made it like taut on the fabric is you go snap, snap, and now I'm just gonna adjust because sometimes the, but it's, it, it, you don't even need to sew it. It makes a very clean, look at how clean that finishes inside. You know, it just pops. If you want, you can sew over it. Like I literally put Rick Rack, Again, with my machine and a big needle, I straight stitch brick rack around a previous one I made. Um, this one, I don't think I'm going to. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna go through my buttons and add a nice big button back there to go through the um, loop on the um, pincushion once I get that, uh, once I get that uh, finished, stuffed, because that takes just forever and then I still have to hand sew it close. Um, and yeah, I made this one a little bit tall. I've been making these for uh, people at work, or, or, or was making them for people at work. I made them for my department, and I had plans to make more for others, but um, uh, work is, you know, defunct at the moment. So uh, yeah, I feel like this one, it, it will hold a lot of thread. You could go shorter. This was a 17 by 11 piece of fabric with half inch seam allowances. I would maybe make it you could go down to like eight without a problem but I also am really bad about cleaning these things out so I can fit a lot of thread I do threads and sometimes uh, just garbage wrappings and stuff um, I've been doing a lot of scrap saving though like uh, here I show you right below boop, boop, I have a garbage bag full of uh, small scraps. This is anything that like I literally probably can't use for other stuff. And I'm actually going to turn this into another project where I use it for a stuffing for um, for a little ottoman pillow thing, I think. So you can, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Keep your scraps. And I might stop throwing trash in my thread bags and also use those because they can work as filling as well but yeah all done things off the table nicely you can throw all your threads in there looks darn cute this is a good heavy needle thing this isn't gonna fall anytime soon I do recommend not actually putting um, I don't I don't like to put hand sewing needles into these things because they will on occasion work their way all the way inside and then you've lost your needle um and that even i mean that even literally goes with the tomato like that you can get i've had i've had needles lost into tomatoes before um so one of the other projects i'm going to do is i'm going to replace this which is a needle card thing i made a while back i mean like this was scrap and thrown together and like i don't even remember it's just some batting uh, a piece of cardboard, probably from a cereal box or something, I don't even remember. I was, like, super in a hurry to deal with a bunch of needles that I had. And, I mean, like, I am sad to even show you the, like, state of sewing on this, because it's, like, looked like I didn't even, didn't even clip my thread there. Um, it was literally just a crap, I need to do something, um, very quickly for some reason. I don't remember why, but i make a nice one now. Um, yeah, so I just use these for straight pins with ball heads and stuff that won't disappear inside of it. Um, and then I have this for the regular needles, which is a really nice way to uh, keep them, honestly, because uh, you can always add more. So the old one, the new one. Yeah, so, new one. I did a much better job with the uh, binding on the edges, front, back. Put these cute little buttons to hold it closed. And I decided to use the um, more of the uh, wool that I had left over from the ham and sausage roll in here to, instead of thing in the old one I had used some random batting that I had and just a piece of fabric so I think this looks a little bit nicer and it matches all of my stuff 
You have no idea how obsessed I am with this right now. So obsessed. Okay, so at this point I have finished my little bag. I had a few snafus with it. Uh, I somehow did my math wrong and had to put a little uh, fold in there, but that's on the bottom on the inside, so psh, you can't see it. Um, so this is my new serger thread catcher, uh, which is nice. Okay, so let me explain a little bit about this. Let me move my serger. So I made it as wide as my serger, and then the big thing, um, basically as wide as my serger feet, so it sits kind of right underneath both of them on each side. Big thing about this is on the back of it, I put uh, this shelf liner stuff, and this is something that I started doing. So we used to we, we used to have some of these at a theater I worked at. They were wonderful. We had ones that literally like were on a wire that wrapped around the feet, um, but uh, at one point the table that we had the sergers on, when you would serge on it, the whole thing would start sliding around. So, uh, when a, somebody came up with the brilliant idea to make them this way and put the backing on it. So, um, that's what I did. All right, there it is with the serger in place. This basically kind of, sit, kind of sits right at the edge. And then the Ridgeline help, helps hold it all out. And the Ridgeline runs about halfway back. I didn't run it the whole way, but see, just the little feetsy sit on it. Um, I think it was after... Someone was surging something, like a lot of something, and like the, the serger almost fell off the table. It was it was bad. Was that me? I don't remember. It might have happened to a couple people. Anyways, so then I also made my little thread catcher out of the same matching stuff. Whee! As you saw, that's cute. And I made my little needle book. And then I have my machine covers. Here's my board all recovered. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty. I kind of got to curate my stuff and reorganize it a little bit. I did a little uh, Instagram video on what all was on here so the other day, so you can go check that out if you want. Uh, somewhere on Instagram, I think. Over here we have all of my sewing accessories together. Look at how cute it is! Yeah, I'm, I'm still super obsessed with this. And then I got my little needle book and my ham and uh, sausage roll. So yeah, this... Um, I feel like, so this is compacted a little bit more, and I feel like I definitely need to um, open it up and add some more. This got a little bit better once I, like, pressed and uh, steamed it. The Some of the wrinkles kind of came out of the corner, and it's a little more rounded, in my opinion, now. Um, although, I might still open this up also, maybe from this end, and add a little more stuffing. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so... So I hope you guys really enjoyed watching me make all of the random accoutrement for my sewing room. Um, I'm really, really happy with how it all turned out, and I still have more things that I'm probably going to make out of it. I have a bunch of scraps left over, um, and so if you have any ideas of things that I could make for my sewing room, please share. Um, I'm sorry that <laughs> it took an extra week to get this video out. Um, COVID, blues, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, depression gets to you sometimes. Um, and I just had kind of a rough week, it took a couple of days, it didn't really help. Um, and then this week I've been dealing with trying to uh, start a part-time job. So, but hopefully that is not going to affect filming or video too much moving forward. Um, but we'll see. Things might slow down, I might change the day that I'm putting videos out, I haven't quite decided. Um, but I got some other things going on, uh, or in the works that I'm, I'm going to work on this week and hopefully film. Um, it's, it's always, always so hard to remember to turn on the camera sometimes. Um, cause like I've been working on this project behind me and I haven't really filmed as much of it as I would have liked cause I kind of forget, um, that, oh, I should stop and set up the camera and film. Um, anyways, I hope that people are sticking around and that people are joining and enjoying my random sewing journeys. Um, please leave me comments and suggestions of things that you want to see or um, things I can do better. Again, trying some new stuff this week with editing and sound and whatnot, so hopefully it's all good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you for coming to my channel and I look forward to making more content for you guys every week, so. Have a good week.
long as I get it cut first. That's the most important part. Most important part. Most important part. Words are hard some days. I'm sorry. Um, 